Hello everyone. Welcome to this video. Today what I'd like to discuss is a continuation from uh, from the first video we did regarding Ubuntu Server 22.04 LTS. Um, in the first video we went over how to install um, an Ubuntu Server and in today's video what I'd like to go over is a few maintenance uh, things that should happen once you have your your Ubuntu server up and installed okay now none of these techniques are um, are what you would want to call you should do you shouldn't do them in any particular order okay but you should make sure you do them alright they're gonna help you uh, maintain your system so let's get started so here we are already at the login screen after booting up and I'm just going to go ahead and sign in. And it's just as simple as putting in your username and password. And now we are into the, uh, the server. All right. Now, what I, the first thing I want to do is uh, we can go over a little bit about what this, uh, this shows here. As you can see, I'm still in a virtual environment. Um, and this is right talking about um, this is our um, I call it message of the day I don't know what the official uh, the official word the wording of this is but as you can see it shows you some basic system information um, the load times memory usage swap usage um, as well as how many processes you're doing and your IP address okay so Let's go ahead and clear the screen so we can start fresh. And the way you can do that is one of several ways. You can go ahead and start by doing a C-L-E-A-R and then press enter. That will clear the screen. Or if you want to do a keyboard sh shortcut, on your keyboard you would press the control button and the letter L. And that will clear the screen. So either way, either way will work. So the first thing you want to do, or one of the things you want to do when you get your server up and running, is you want to check for updates. And so the command to do that is very simple. It's just going to be sudo to give us root uh, powers temporarily. And then you want to type in apt space lis space tac tac. And then let's see, it's going to be up upgradable. Uh, all right, and this is going to tell us what type of upgrades we, we need to do on this system. And then you just press enter. It's going to ask for your password. You put in your password. Press enter. And as you can see, it says listing dot 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 and done. That means there's no, um, there are no updates or upgrades that need to be done on this system currently. Everything is up to date. But just for uh, posterity, let's go ahead. If you did need to run some updates and upgrades, it's a very simple command to do. Uh, it requires uh, root writes, so you're going to need to put in sudo space, and then it's going to be two commands. It's going to be apt space up date space minus y and the minus y is a flag that tells the uh, the system don't ask me if I'm if I'm sure I want to go ahead and install it just go ahead and install it by default and then you hit the space bar and then you hit two ampersands and then space and then another command which is going to be sudo apt space upgrade and then minus y which is going to do the same thing it's going to tell the system go ahead and automatically go to update um, or upgrade this system for me without asking me if I'm sure I want to do that and then from there that's the whole com complete command and it's two commands the first command obviously for update which is going to update the system and the packages and you're going to get to see what all new packages are in the uh, repositories um, and the Ubuntu repository is the uh, database where you keep where Ubuntu keeps all or most of their uh, software packages. 
and then you can just look and see what type of update you need to run on your own system that's what the second command is so once you do that you just go ahead and press enter and it's going to do its thing it's going to check uh, uh, Ubuntu repositories and it's going to see if there's any new packages that need to be updated you want to do this every once in a while especially before you install any new packages to make sure you get the latest um, the latest and the greatest update of packages um, if this is your first time installing uh, Ubuntu server this is going to take a while. It can take anywhere between 1, 5, 10, 15 minutes. It just depends. So be patient. Let it go through its process. It'll do its thing, and eventually it'll be done. Okay, let's see here. Looks like I do have two updates that need to be upgraded. They're both security updates. Okay, and so we will go ahead and just let it finish this process after it does this update it's going to go ahead and do its upgrade and there we go and it's done everything's done everything is updated and upgraded it looks like and now just to go ahead and make sure that everything is updated again Instead of typing in that whole command, you can use your arrow, up and down arrow keys. And then you can run the, the, uh, the previous commands again. So I'm going to run this one, sudo apt list, and then space, tac tac, upgradable, and then press enter. All right. Now it looks like it's done. So we're going to go ahead and clear the screen. All right. And let's see here. Next thing we can go ahead and do is we can go ahead and um, instead of typing in sudo all the time let's go ahead and uh, uh, create a password for our root user and then from there we can go ahead and log in under root and we can run the rest of the commands from there because the rest of the commands will require root access so to change or enable the password on your root uh, uh, account you just type in this command sudo app and then you want to put in let's see p a s s w d for password space and then put in the username which for us is going to be root and you're going to press enter and then it's going to prompt you to go ahead and put in the new root password press enter and it'll ask you to re, uh, type it in again and then press enter again it'll let you know if it take took it and as we can see it was successful and so now let's go ahead and switch over into the uh, root password and or log into the root uh, the root account and we do that with typing SU that stands for super user space and then minus uh, tag or or hyphen and then press enter then it's asking for the root password we're gonna go ahead and put that in and now we are the root password we are in the root account the way we can figure out that we're in the root account number one if you look at the prompt Right there, it shows a uh, pound sign. That's usually the regular um, uh, prompt for for uh, the root account. You can also check uh, which account you are in if you type in the command who am I. Press enter, it'll tell you which account you're logged in under. As you can see, we are logged in under root. So the next thing we want to do is um, want to check your firewall so you want to check and see if it's enabled and so to do that the firewall that comes by default with uh, Ubuntu 22.04 and most Ubuntu um, uh, distributions especially uh, server and desktop as well is going to be known as UFW that's called uh, UFW standing for 
uh, unqualified or uncomplicated firewall. And so the command are very simple. You just type in UFW space status and then press enter. It says the firewall is inactive. So we want to go ahead and enable the UFW firewall. And so to do that, you just type in the command UFW space. Uh, okay, and then you type in enable. This will enable the firewall. And as you can see, it says firewall is active and enabled on the system. And that's good. All right. So the next thing we want to do is if you decide that you want to remote into this system, you're going to need to make sure that your uh, uh, port for 22 is open. If you recall earlier when we installed on, on a recent um, video, when we installed Ubuntu 22.04, we um, installed an application known as OpenSSH. OpenSSH lets you uh, be able to run the remote session, the SSH session, um, on your remotely from another computer to your server. Okay. However, before that happens, we need to open up port 22 on your uh, firewall. Now, the first thing we can also do before we, we do anything else is we can check and see if port 22 is already open. And uh, I believe it is, but to check it out, let's go ahead and run this command. This is gonna be SSS, excuse me, SS, which stands for, I believe, secure socket layer or socket um, something. And then you just type in minus and then we're going to type in the letters T-U-L-P-N. Um, T standing for, uh, let me see, I believe it's, um, uh, yeah, it stands for TCP. U is for UDP. Uh, L is for local. P is for port. And N is for number. And then you just press enter. And then right here, you can go ahead and look and see which ports are opening, which ports are being listened to. Uh, as you can see, over on the far left-hand side, you got the, um, the network process ID, and then next to that, you have the state. Um, anything that shows um, listen, that's what we're interested in. And then it, as you look all the way over to where it says local address and then the port, as you can see at the very top where it says um, 127.0.0.53. And then other than that, um, it says low, L-O, that stands for local host. That's uh, your IP, your local host IP address on your computer. And then you can see where it says colon 53. That means that um, I believe it, port 53 is for uh, DNS and that means that um, IP address 127.0.0.53 is listening on port 53. Okay, and as, as you go further down, you'll see port 68, then 53 again. And then you'll, you'll see where it shows 0.0.0.0, um, .0 which is the second from the bottom. And it shows colon. Um, 22. That means that port 22 is listening on it. It's showing that port 22 is open. So that's good, but it may not be open on the firewall. It may still be blocked through the firewall. So let's go ahead and clear the screen. And what we want to do is, again, let's go ahead and do UF, UFW space status. And enter. It just shows that the firewall is active. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and open up the firewall or open up the port for SSH. Okay. And the way we do that is is that we go ahead and create a rule for it. And so here's the command to open up port 22, which is going to just be UFW space allow space uh, 22. And then slash, let's see, forward, that's a forward slash, 
and then you want to do TCP uh, yeah TCP and then you just want to press enter and now it says the rule has been added okay so that command I'll just hit the up arrow as you can see that command it just says allow port 22 on the uh, internet protocol TCP transmission control protocol to be open so that we can go ahead and use it and SSH into it now what we want to do is we want to check on the status so we just want to type in the command UFW you excuse me UFW space status and then press enter and we should see that uh, port 22 has been implemented as a policy and yes we do we see that port 22 has been open for version uh, or IP version 4 and IP version 6 so that's good for now that's all we need to do with that um, the next thing we need to do or what I usually do is I usually reload the um, UFW firewall to make sure that it's been restarted and so the command for doing that is UFW space reload and then press enter the firewall has been lo reloaded the other thing I, I usually do especially if you're using system D I understand that um, there will be some distros that will be deployed without system D but uh, Ubuntu 22.04 does have system D and so you can reload the firewall tools from there as well uh, and it's just system CTL space and then you want to go ahead and put in well first let's do a status of it and then let's see UFW and then press enter okay so as we can see it is up and running but what we want to do just to make sure we want to go ahead and restart it as well and so to restart it let me go ahead and clear the screen here um, to restart it we want to type in Let's see system ctl space restart space ufw press enter okay it should be up and running and then if we go ahead and check on the status again press enter and as you can see where it shows in green it says it's active so it's still active and then as you can also see just above that where it says loaded that that means it has been configured to every time the computer restarts it go ahead and restarts the uh, the firewall with the same rules that we've done so far so that's good and so the next thing that we want to do let's go ahead and clear the screen again next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and check to make sure our date and time is correct on the system and so to do that let's go ahead and uh, type in the command date for date and for me let's see it shows zero oh it does it does show the right time okay so it's showing 607 that is the correct time but for, for those of us who do who, who do not have the correct time Let's go ahead and see if we can go over and get that done. So, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and get to the Etsy um, directory or Etsy folder. So, let's see here. Let's see. Let's do a PWD to see which folder we are in. Looks like we are in the root folder. So, uh, what we want to do is go do a CD space forward slash. Sorry press enter and then if we do an LS which stands for list okay we can see we're in the main root folder so what we want to do is we want to go to the Etsy folder so if we do a CD for change directory space and then ET and then hit the tab that'll complete the, uh, complete the command out for us for that folder it says ETC and then we just go ahead and press enter all right and then what we want to do is we want to cat the um, the file known as time zone and so what we're going to do is we're just going to type in cat space 
T-I-M-Z, and then hit tab. It should say time zone. And then you just press enter. Now, for me, it shows the correct time zone because I'm on the eastern coast. So that does show the correct time zone. If it does not show the correct time zone for where you are, there is a way of adjusting that. So here's the command that we're going to use to go into the configuration uh, file for that time zone or to change your time zone. And so it's going to be dpk, oops, kg space, oops, hyphen reconfigure tz for time zone data. And then that's the command you're going to use. You press enter. And as you can see, it comes up with a list of countries and, and, and uh, zones that you can choose from. All right. Now, I just noticed this. I have two of them. I have America, which I am in America, but then I have the U.S. For me, it normally works if I choose America. All right. And then, as you can see, I can choose New York, which is the one that I normally use. But hold on a minute. Let's do this. Let's go back. For me, I'm going to try U.S. Let's see. Okay, there we go. And then for U.S., I'm going to choose, um, I'm along the eastern seaboard, so I'm going to choose eastern. All right. And there you go. My time has been set. And everything is working and so you just go ahead and just choose uh, type in date again and as you can see it's still the correct time that's how you can go ahead and change your time zone and uh, make sure that you have the correct time zone for your area okay and then let's just go ahead and clear the screen now let's see, the last thing that we want to go over today is we want to go over checking your IP address. Well, we, went all, we already went over checking the ports uh, with the command SS, oh, oops, that's SS space minus T-U-L-P-N, and then that shows us which ports are opening, open and which ports are listening on, uh, on which uh, address, okay? Um, and another thing, if, before we go into uh, checking your um, your uh, IP number, let's go ahead and clear the screen. Uh, if you want to, if you want to check on a uh, command, you can do it one of several ways. You can do like the SS command. You can do SS, or no, you can do you can check it out in the man pages. Type in man. That's short for manual, and then SS. Press enter. And right here, it shows the commands for um, and the switches for the SS, the SS um, command, uh, which stands for something, um, let's see, socket utility, for lack of a better term. And then you can just go through here and look at the switches. Uh, to go to the next page, you can either hit the down arrow or the... Um, the space bar on your keyboard and if you want to go back you can hit the uh, B button B as in Bravo and that will take you it should take you back let me see huh. for some reason it has frozen up on me This is embarrassing. Oh, here we go. Okay. I wasn't in. <laughs> I guess I wasn't in the screen. Anyway, if you press Q, that will go ahead and, and take you out of the man pages. But just to go ahead. Let's try it one more time. And as I said, uh, to go ahead and scroll to the next bottom or the next page, you just hit the... the um, the keyboard uh, or the I'm sorry the space bar on your uh, keyboard 
If you want to go back to the previous screen, you just hit the B button, B as in Bravo, and that'll take you up to the screen before. So you just go through here. These are the commands and the flags for using the SS uh, command. And then once you found out what you needed to find out in order to escape, as it says down there at the bottom, you can hit Q to quit. And let's see here. Let's go ahead and cl uh, clear the screen. And then the next thing to find out what commands work with uh, the SS command, you can type in uh, SS space tac tac help. And that also gives you a list of commands that you can, that you can use. All right. If it scrolls through the screen really quick and you're not able to see from the beginning, there's an easy way to fix that, or this is what I normally do. I just go ahead and use that command, space, and then I hit pipe, space, and then hit and type in less. That'll make it scroll only one page at a time. Once you press enter, now you can see the beginning of the page. This is the first page. And then, as normal, go ahead and hit the space bar. That'll go to the next page. And if you want to go back to the beginning of the top page, you just hit the B button on your keyboard, B as in Bravo, and it goes back to the previous page. All right. All right, let's go ahead and clear the screen. And the last thing that we're going to talk about today is uh, looking up your IP address. And it's very simple. Um, what you're going to do is type in this command, IP space, and then you can type in a address, right, and then show. And then press enter, and it will show you the, uh, the interfaces and your IP address. Okay, you see uh, interface one is the loopback interface. Interface two is the actual interface the network interface card that we use to get onto the internet. And then under that, you can see where it says INET and then the IP address, 192.168.1.27. All right. Now, a shortcut of doing that is if you wanted to, you could just type in IP space, and then instead of typing out address, you can type in A and then space and then S for show. And if you happen to remember the, uh, the interface name, you can hit space and then type in the interspace name. And then press enter, and it'll just show you the, the output for that one interface card for you. And so that's what you have right there. All right, well, thank you very much. That's the end of this video. I just wanted to show you this little bit of... Uh, these few things that you can do for uh, maintenance and maintaining your server once you have it installed. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. It will be uploaded to both um, Facebook and YouTube. So hopefully you liked it. Um, when you get a chance, if you will, if you just please like and subscribe. Thank you very much. I hope you guys have a good rest of your day or night. Thank you and bye-bye.